Frenchman's Flat, the dry bed of an ancient lake, a firing area at the Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada test site. The shot tower, looming to the height of a 40-story building, is the center of a huge array of complex instrumentation and test material displays. The high, slender towers to the left of the shot tower are supports for objects whose response to atomic heat and blast will be determined for military purposes. An elevator takes all workmen and material to the weapon cab at the tower's top. And today, it carries up a firing party to arm the weapon after a final hour check of all circuits. On the ground, instrument lines stretch out thousands of feet from the zero point. More research instruments, hundreds of them, are buried in the ground, mounted on metal grids, or fixed on other poles. And that yellow box on a pole contains one of many high-speed cameras which may survive long enough to record needed explosion data. A shallow lake, fed by pipeline from an underground source some miles away, created for study of blast effects over water. Test objects exposed in this area include jeeps and vertical stabilizers from F-80 and F-86 aircraft. Miles back, observers from all services and several allied nations stand by for the first daylight tower shot ever fired here. Rockets go up to make a smoke grid background for technical photography. Observers without special glasses turn away to protect their eyes. The shock wave, invisible but carrying the thunder of a hundred storms, is now racing toward us with the speed of sound across the miles of desert floor. spreading mist or haze is churned up silt and ground dust and not a part of the bomb cloud itself. <laughs> 